The jigsaw. Some people call it the saber saw. This should be in about every homeowner or garage workshop. It's a very versatile tool. You can cut curves, straight cuts, rip cuts, cross cuts. You can even bevel the, the uh, base. The other thing you can do with the jigsaw that you can't do with the bandsaw is cut out the middle of the section. This because it's what they call a reciprocating blade. The blade moves up and down. So the, the versatility of this saw, the price or affordability of this saw is very worth it. They range anywhere from $40 on up to about $150 to $200. Before we can begin using the jigsaw, we've got to understand the settings and the safety that come with it. But first, let's go over the parts. All jigsaws have some sort of trigger switch. Some have an off and on, but most of them will have a trigger switch. This, this red button here on the side is a locking trigger button. I don't really recommend you use those because the saw could not stop when you expect it to. You have your main handle. This is called a handle grip. Other ones are called a barrel grip. They won't have the upper section. It's a matter of personal preference. They both do the same job. You have your motor area. You have some sort of base. Or some people call it a shoe. You have an orbital adjustment. What this does is it sets it to where instead of just going straight up and down, which is reciprocating, you're going to have a forward and backward motion. This makes it a more aggressive cut. Here on the front of the saw, it, there is two wheels or two guides that keep the blade going straight up and down. You need to make sure that the blade is always between those when you're cutting. And finally you have the saw blade. Really important that you read the manual. Not necessarily for the safety aspects of it, that's always a good thing to review, but each type of blade, this one's called a T-shank uh, bit, or blade, excuse me, so you want to make sure you get the right type for the jigsaw that you, you purchase. Some have a hook, some have a hole, Again, they all vary just slightly differently. Where to set the orbital adjustment. A lot of them have blowers that will use the motor fan to blow the sawdust out of the way. And some of them even have a work light. Now let's get set up and go through some of the safety precautions we need to take into consideration when we're using the jigsaw. First off, I want to make sure to unplug when I'm doing any adjustments. Remember to read and follow all the safety instructions that come with your manual when you're, when you're purchasing or using a power tool. Knowing how to use your power tool safely is going to greatly reduce the risk of personal injury. And remember this, there's no more important safety rule than to wear these, your safety glasses. Now I've got the right blade installed. The amount of teeth is corresponding to the type of material, wood, plastic, metal, pine, oak. There's all different variations. Yes, you can get a multi-tooth blade or a multi-purpose blade, uh, but when you're purchasing them, make sure you paid attention whether it's a hook, a T-shank, or a pin blade that goes into your jigsaw. So again, read your manual for that reason. Always buy a quality blade regardless of the quality of the saw. You, you, you can buy an inexpensive saw and put a good blade, you'll get a decent cut. You buy an a expensive saw, put a cheap blade in it, you're going to get a cheap cut. Just keep that into mind. So everything's set properly. The next thing I need to do is get it my board secured. I always use a couple of clamps. To hold it in, in position. Now I'm going to use a Sharpie for this demonstration, but I wouldn't recommend that personally for your workpiece. You want to use a pen or, or pencil more than likely. Positioning. I want to position the base onto the wood, but the blade is not touching. Put both hands on the saw and follow through all the way. Let's talk about clamp position though here. I want to clamp it as close as I can to the workbench, but not close enough that I cut the workbench. If you clamp too far away, it creates what is called a diving board effect. The further away you get, the more spring action it has. So clamp near the workbench as, as much as possible. The last consideration you want to think about is the cord. You don't want to cut the cord. That kind of be shocking. Okay, plan your cuts. Just like on the bandsaw or the scroll saw, you can only twist so much. Okay, the other way I can control vibration is two hands on the, on the uh, saw and keep the base all the time on the base or the flatness of the wood. Let's go ahead and make a cut. If 
follow through, hold it out till it stops, set it down. It's really important with the jigsaw because you can bend the blade if you pull it out too quick. The one thing that a jigsaw or saber saw can do that a bandsaw can is cut out the middle. I want to cut out this square here. There's a couple ways you can go about that. One way is definitely recommended. The other way I don't want to see you do in a wood, general woodworking class. The first way that I don't recommend, just to show it to you, is called a plunge cut. I'm not actually going to demonstrate it, but I want to talk about it. Where you put the tip of the, the base of the saw on the, uh, the front, position it on the wood, pull the trigger and force the blade into the workpiece. This is not good for a couple of reasons. One, it's hard to control, get it exactly where you want it to start. And secondly, it's probably going to bend the blade before you uh, get the achieved result that you're looking for. So how can we get this area cut out if we can't just force them into it? Okay, that's where a drill comes into play. Now, where should I drill the hole? You could drill one hole in the middle and have to do a bunch of freehand cutting to get to the corners. But however, my recommendation is to drill a hole right in each corner. Okay. If you recall from drill operation, you want to make sure that if the bottom matters, you want to make sure you clamp a scrap piece underneath it. All right. Now, again, the same safety procedures apply. Keep the base on the, saw, the wood at all times. We definitely don't want to remove the saw from the workpiece until the blade is stopped. When you're doing a through cut, you can position it off and float out of the way. But a non through or a middle cut or interior cut, you want to make sure it stops completely. The holes in each corner will allow me just to keep going right around the corner. Now I'm going to have some clamps in the way. I need to think about that beforehand, so I'm going to have to make this in a couple of passes. Let's, I've got it positioned in one of the holes. So I've made one cut. I can just rotate the piece and keep right on going. I do have the room. See how I wait for it to come to a complete stop? And at the end there I can lift it up, but make sure you're not going to allow the saw to hit the board when you're coming up. The biggest thing you need to worry about safety-wise, in addition to making sure your hands aren't going to be in the path of the blade, the second most dangerous thing you got to worry about is these scraps that have fallen on the floor below my feet. Those create tripping hazards because you can step on them and lose your foot out from underneath you. Now let's review.